Join us for a review of the Polestar 1. Let's go. Here in the front we can see the typical new Polestar grille with this dot structure but pretty strong, looks a little bit Tektronen like, I don't know, with the Polestar logo then, beautiful color here also for today, so definitely a very Scandinavian stylish design look, then the Thor's Hammer LED daytime running light together with full LED unit right here. The length is at 4 meters 58, 15 foot 1 or 181 inches, 18 centimeters or 7 inches shorter than the Volvo S60 mid-size, so just as a comparison. So it's not a very long vehicle. The door handles here, they fold out, and then the mirrors here, very beautiful, almost frameless, really cool. The Polestar 2 has that as well. 21 inch wheels, really massive, what a styling. And also you see the valve caps, for example. And then this very stretched roof line, really cool, very strong shoulders, almost has some kind of small Bentley Continental style, or what, what do you think? And also from the rear, a design object here, beautiful signature and everything looks really aligned. There's a small wing lip that folds up when you drive faster than 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour. The pure electric speed is 160 kilometers an hour or 100 miles per hour. And the pure overall speed, 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles per hour. And by the way, one electric motor per wheel and that means torque vectoring, active torque vectoring is possible so that for example the outside corner wheel is spinning a little bit faster, gets more torque and then re-pushes you in the corner. Two liter four cylinder combustion engine, 309 horsepower plus 68 horsepower from an ISG integrated starter generator in the front and two more electric motors in the rear 232 horsepower and overall that accounts for 609 horsepower and a thousand newton meters of torque 4.2 seconds is the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour and you can charge this thing with 11 kilowatt ac or 50 kilowatt dc that is possible the battery size 34 kilowatt hours so that's you know, pretty massive for a plug-in hybrid vehicle and the highest range of a PF on the market, more than one kilometers or more than 60 miles. In the lower part, we can see the CFRP parts, carbon fiber reinforced plastics for lightweight building and of course also for stiffness. But yeah, lightweight, not really such an issue here because the battery adds so much in, um, weight anyway. So here we do see like a Volvo S60, a little bit pimped from the steering wheel, for example, just with the Polestar logo. Then we also have the Volvo-like seats. So yes, this is essentially a very expensive Volvo with some more other parts. Here, interesting with the contrasting seat belts. This is also available for the Polestar 2, for example. Also recently shown that to you. Surfaces here for the skin, for the <laughs> seat. Yeah, I already told it. Just animal skin here for the seat surfaces. So in the Polestar 2, it's different. They have a more sustainable and more friendly approach. But here in the Polestar 1, they still went then with the old school stuff, sadly. Other than that, soon more two screens and stuff, but this is also very well known from the Volvo models. And getting inside, wide door here, typical for a coupe, and you have a comfortable seat position. The Volvo seat ergonomics is usually pretty good, so you have a really nice position, and everywhere you look around, no um, B pillar here, of course, and also the top and so on. This is such a great glass all around view that is creating a very unique experience. 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, and under this glass roof, then there's still plenty of headroom left.
interior overview with a known Scandinavian design by Volvo. So indeed the Polestar 1 is more Volvo still, whereas the Polestar 2 is more unique in the layout already. Here you can see straight designer also from dashboard, additional bowels and working speaker. That's always a you know, good highlight here. Then also this carbon fiber structure, vertical screen, so more details to that. And then the lower part, you still have a manual volume knob. That's actually quite cool. Also interesting sound always. Then this crystalline like shifting lever. The only thing is it's sequential. So like D, N, R, R, and D. So you have like two steps between drive and reverse mode. And that's always a little bit, you know, annoying. Set temperature to 22 degrees. Temperature set to 22 degrees. Well, that works. Digital instruments look like this, left side speed, right side then for the power meter and also recuperation in the middle. That's how it looks like when you have a GPS root set. And the display is clear to read, speed and also a loud speed, always a nice addition. But here in this car, pretty much everything is standard. But for that price, I think we can also expect that. And here on this glass roof, there is this Polestar logo inside the glass. And this fixed glass roof in general goes all over the vehicle in general it creates such a light experience here in the car <laughs> yeah and then i'm here in this polestar <laughs> hole um yeah hardly able to sit here and i put the co-driver seat to a position where i could uh, but yeah it's not really, it's like an in Porsche 911, it's not really possible to sit here. There's Isofix here, however, and also top tether, top part, which is like beautifully done here. Um, yeah, but it's more like emergency seat or maybe for a child seat. So we open the trunk here with the key and you can see there's not much to see, at least trunk wise. More there, so more than that. So you see here, the cabin trolley fits in perfectly, but that's about it, about 140 liters. Um, here the width is actually a little more than a meter, but then of course the height, um, yeah, just barely 40 centimeters and the poorest in length here, just 40 centimeters about in length. But even more interesting, yeah, it would also fit here in the vertical way that it works. But then look at that. This is like really concept car showcase like here for the different electric components. Yeah, very interesting, fancy to see. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge here today, the active driving lounge with the Polestar 1 and we switch to that power mode directly where the combustion engine and the electric motor, all of them deliver us now the 1000 Newton meters of torque. And we do a flying start from 30 kilometers an hour and guys wait for that. Let's go. And that's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles per hour. Holy moly, that was quite impressive. Really cool. Here, of course, at higher speeds, it gets a little bit louder then, but stability here, lane change stability. Yeah, it's very stable. The suspension is very stiff. Um, steering feel is, ugh, look at that. It's like almost nothing in the middle. It's like, yeah, very artificial steering feel. That's probably a downside. But the suspension, I mean, that it's so stiff. In this case, then here, at high speed, that's good. Typical motorway speed, 130 kilometers an hour. That's, uh, I think, okay. Noise installation wise, no problem. There's some strange noises from that top. Hmm, that might be something, yeah, build quality issues for this concept style vehicle. Hmm. By the way, even if you drive in the pure electric mode, you can drive on the motorway pure electric that is possible um, even a little bit faster so that's okay and the pure electric acceleration is always let's say a little, little bit more fun to me it's of course not that strong but then it's rear wheel drive only yay <laughs> fuel economy then always depends on like recharging but if you predominantly use the, the you know the combustion engine then you also can score some like seven liters, one kilometers. 
30 US MPG somewhat, 40 UK MPG somewhat in this, this region. But that, again, totally depends on how often and when do you plug in. When you hit the brakes, recuperation is happening. I also see it in the digital gauges. So first, of course, regenerative braking, and then when even more braking power would be needed, then the real brakes are being applied. Other driving modes would be all-wheel drive, which is um, you know, ensuring that you always have all-wheel drive. That is more a thing that yeah, counts more for the Volvo SUVs, I would say that you can even have all-wheel drive even if the battery is depleted then still you know power is being sent then to the electric motors by the combustion engine um, yeah for this car I mean it's more probably about the power mode because this one is also the all-wheel drive mode but just powerized all pure electric this then rather feels like driving a Polestar 2 and really good feeling just not necessarily in the steering um, but good feeling from the car you know it's still a heavy vehicle because of the batteries although they use this CFRP parts here and there but you know when you have such a big battery you you, you can't deny that so um, usually I would leave it probably in the hybrid mode it also makes sense for example in when you're going a little bit faster than this, this may be then overtaken or taken by the combustion engine. And when you're in the city and slower, then use the electric drive. This is then how you can yeah, make it most efficient. In the tunnel, again, I think it's not too loud. So they have insulated the car very well from the outside world. And the engine doesn't sound too good. It's this two liter four cylinder engine. Mm, can't expect too much from it, but as we've shown to you, this car is more than enough performance, definitely. Oh, going off. We can once more go to this power mode and acceleration when we are already at speed from 90 kilometers an hour. Let's go. Plop, that's once again 200, and now here fast in the corner it, it doesn't give me the safest feeling to be honest so um, the suspension is stiff but sometimes at some waves it shakes up anyway so I can't say this that driving dynamics wise this is a good car so to the left again whoa see here the steering also yeah. so a lot of the things that Driving dynamics wise is, let's say, a little bit doubtful. So, once again, you feel that this is more like a concept stage of a vehicle. It has like a lot of impressiveness and a lot of power. But recently driven the Polestar 2, you definitely feel that this is their vehicle, you know? So, they built all of this stuff here just to get a little bit more ready for the Polestar 2. And the Polestar 2 is like so much more a better vehicle, like in in any respect you know uh, but even more so it is interesting to drive it here now due to the availability and that this uh, car is so limited in in the numbers it's um it was the case that we first drove the Polestar 2 and then the Polestar 1 yeah but that's how it is um, sometimes nevertheless a very interesting and emotional vehicle here And now to the conclusion for today with the Polestar 1. Yes, this is more a halo vehicle. We see it in the trunk. We see it that it's, yeah, feels somewhat hand-built, but not in a good way, more in a bad way. So a lot of rattling and squeaking noise on the interior, but styling-wise, wow, such a beautiful vehicle and really, really cool. Just from looks, also nice styling in the interior, although this is just reminding us of the you know, so far Volvo models. The Polestar 2 definitely changes that. Also special with the Android infotainment system, Android-based infotainment system. This then here, a little bit more old school, but this car actually prepared what it has, been, has been done later on with the Polestar 2 or what has been improved. The driving um, performance, power-wise, very impressive, cool drive. Driving dynamics, agility, suspension-wise, 
Mm, yeah, I think that can, can be improved, so wasn't really convinced of that. However, due to this, you know, glass um, house feeling, this still somehow feels very unique. So I have to say the Polestar 2 is more Polestar. The Polestar 1 here is a little bit more Volvo. Yes, I would rather say this is a very, very expensive Volvo. It's not really worth the price. You can also go with the Volvo S60 on the one hand. On the other hand, yes, it does have the unique features and also the real power, the real performance, but definitely not worth the price. But so interesting to see this Halo vehicle, how the Polestar brand, the own brand then started with Volvo. What do you think? Please leave me your comments in our comment section. Definitely a very unique and interesting car, that's for sure. Thank you so much for tuning in today and also check out our Polestar 2 review if you haven't done so far.